Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 1J, where we're going to continue our discussion of chromosomes to think about how the genes are arranged on the chromosomes. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into a chromosome and zoom in until we can resolve a single gene and get a sense of what the gene looks like at a chromosome scale, how much of the gene codes for a protein, and then we'll zoom in on a different gene to see how genes are arranged on the chromosomes. So just to refresh and affirm this very important point from the previous lecture, each of the 23 chromosome types in us, or of the different chromosomes in any organism, has different genes, not just different versions of genes. So we have the chromosomes are colored here to represent that. So we have two versions of the light green chromosome and two versions of the blue chromosome and two versions of each of these chromosomes in our cells. And in the whole population, there are many versions of these chromosomes. Now, here's a particular chromosome. This is human chromosome 13. And you see the landmarks that I pointed out earlier, the centromere and the special end sequences, the telomeres. But what we're going to do now is we're going to focus in on a particular gene. And the gene we're going to look at is the BRCA2 gene. This is one of the genes that's been studied intensively because some versions of this gene cause a greatly elevated risk of breast and um, ovarian cancer. So this gene is located on chromosome 13. And you can see it's at about 32 million base pairs along the about 114 million base pairs, usually abbreviated megabase chromosome. So we're we'll zoom in on this, expand this bit to look at just this segment of the chromosome. This is about two megabases of chromosome, two million base pairs, and the BRCA2 gene occupies this space here. So let's zoom in some more. Here's the two megabases segment of the chromosome. We'll zoom in to see the BRCA2 gene. And now this yellow segment is the whole gene. The gene itself we see is 90 kilobases, 90,000 base pairs long. And here we have a schematic drawing of the gene in yellow at below, but it's kind of funny looking. What this represents is the boxes and the vertical lines represent the exons. And you will remember from an earlier lecture, these are the parts of the protein that code for genes. So that's an exon, that's an exon, that's an exon, that's an exon, that's an exon. There are about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25 exons in this gene. But most of the gene isn't exons at all. Most of the gene, like this segment here, is introns. So this is an intron there, there, there. All of the spaces between the exons are intron sequences, which are cut out and discarded when the mature messenger RNA is synthesized. Now, that's how one, what one gene looks like. More generally, how are genes arranged on the chromosomes? Well, not the way I would arrange them if I was tidying things up. So here's a different chromosome. This is chromosome 20. It's about 62 megabases long, and we're blowing up a segment of it that's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50 kilobases long. Is that right? No, it's about 500 kilobases long. And in, now we blow this segment up and ask, well, where are the genes? Okay, there are certainly genes in this segment. There's 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 genes in this 500,000 base pairs of DNA sequence. And I'm just highlighting them here. Um, one thing I want to point out, remember when we talked about how one of the things that the promoter does is tell RNA polymerase, 
which strand to use, which determines which direction it goes on the chromosome. Well, here's an example of this. Most of these genes are synthesized off of, it would be the bottom strand in this particular drawing, and they're going this way. But two of the genes are synthesized in the opposite direction, off, which is to say they use the information on the other strand. But the other important thing you'll notice is that there are a lot of spaces in between the genes. So both the order, the direction in which the genes are transcribed, and the spacing of the genes is, seems very random. It's not, it's not neatly organized at all. It doesn't actually need to be neatly organized to work. That's why it's not neatly organized. Now, here's again blowing up a single gene. This is an open reading frame. It's a gene whose function isn't known. It doesn't have a specific name describing its function. It just has a number. Open reading frame number 70 on chromosome 20. And again, in this representation, we see the exons represented as boxes and the introns represented as spaces joining the boxes. Only the boxed parts code for protein, only they will be assembled into the final messenger RNA that's translated into protein. So here's a question for you to give you a, a sense of scale in the chromosome. So chromosome 20 is about 60 million bases long and it's got about 900 genes. Here's a typical gene, and what the question asks is, if all the genes are like this one, how much of chromosome 20's DNA codes for protein? And to answer this question, you'll need to do a bit of arithmetic. You'll also need to do a bit of estimating. 